Now here in part three, we're going to continue with our code. Now, like all great tutorials, it's not a whole lot of fun until you mess up. And so, of course, we've messed up some things, and so we have to fix it. Number one, I've only given IDs to certain things. So I'm going to give IDs to a few more things. So it's a little bit more hybrid approach between HTML4 and HTML5, the way that we're used to. So this aside is going to be the sidebar that's on the left. Um, then we have our article here, and our article is really the content if we look at it, but um, that's one thing I might not put uh, an idea around because we could have more than one article on a page. So I usually don't put um, articles or I don't put um, IDs on articles because we often have more than one article within a page, especially if we have like a blog. And it will see, be something like article um, class equals blog entry. So I might even do class equals content. Then we have a section called extras, and then we have our footer, and this is the ID equals page footer. Now if we're calling that page footer, then we might want to call this one instead of masthead, page header. So that would kind of make sense, maybe. That way we know that it is um, the page header versus a section header or something like that. Now another debatable thing that we have here is whether or not we should be wrapping this section with um, the content area with a section wrapper. Now the reason that this is an issue is because, I don't know if you remember us talking about the outliner, but that outliner is going to want to generate something new inside that section. And that section might not really, we might not really want here at least to generate it. We may want to just say that this area is the content section and this over here is the aside section. So, or the aside. So instead of putting this section ID equals content, I'm actually going to change this to a div, and I'm going to call this content wrapper. Something like that. We can even do content dash wrapper if we want to separate the two words so we can see that they're there. Now, sometimes you see this with uppercase as well. Whoops. Sometimes you see it with uppercase as well, like that. But I tend to do more in mine the dash, just habit. Now, that means we've got our asider aside here. Then we're going to actually have this section inside here. So we're going to have our section. And that section is going to be ID equals content. Now I can finish that section up here. Oh, I have the section already finished there. I can finish that after the article, which is the content. And I know that's kind of redundant, but for right now, just go with me. Um, and then this section down here really is something that we've changed to a div. So you'll see that we have the div here and then we have the div finishing there. Now one of the things that I think is really common or a really good idea is when you're finishing sections that are going to be separated by stuff that you go ahead and do some commenting. So I'm going to put in a comment here and, and sometimes I put these in all uppercase and content. Uh, oh, content wrapper. There we go. And I might put that somewhere else. And content section. That really should be in content wrapper div. So anything like this that we can put in here to help us remember something that's going to be separated because after a while we're going to have a lot of distance between here and that original section. Um, anything that we can do like that 
put comments here, I think can be a really helpful thing. Now another thing that we can do before we go too far is go ahead and reformat our markup just so it's a little logical. And we can go up to commands, apply source formatting, and you'll see that now it's kind of indented things a little bit and it makes things a little bit easier to see what's nested inside of what. Um, so that's one of those things that I do like about Dreamweaver as well, is that it allows me to kind of reformat the text so it's a little bit more um, readable. Now that we have our basic, basic formatting or text done, or basic uh, markup done, I think it's important for us to go ahead and see what's happening with our outline. I'm going to select all of this text and copy it. I did Control c I did Control a to select all, Control c to copy it, and I'm going to go to the HTML5 Outliner tool, and here's one of them. And I'm going to take all that code and paste it in here and just see what happens with this outline. You'll see this one shows me what's kind of going on. I've got the document itself, I've got the navigation, I've got a section, a side, a section, an article, and a section. So that's kind of working out pretty well. It's not, okay, so the article is there and then it's showing the section there after the article, but it's not showing me something for the footer, which I think is kind of interesting. I thought it was supposed to do that. Now, we may find that a different outliner does a different job. So this particular one, G GS Netters, um, may parse this a little bit different. So I'm going to paste that in and do outline this. Uh-oh, provide a file import or URL. Uh, dun, dun, dun. Oh, there it is. I need the outline at the bottom. So outline this. There we go. That's exactly what I wanted. This is actually what my outline says right now. Untitled section, untitled, 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 and untitled. That means that this is not a very semantic markup at this point. So um, be aware that the outliner tool that you use can help you kind of understand what's going on. This shows me what I've got for the different sections, but it doesn't really parse the outline the way it actually is happening. So in the next tutorial, we're going to go ahead and add a little bit of code to our markup to um, make our outline make a little bit more sense. So let's go on.